welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the ancillary aspect of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. These are the teardown videos for the USA made Craftsman Ratchets before you, like Vanna White, ah, <laughs> do my little presentation. We have the Roundhead Craftsman Ratchets. These are the ones from the early 1990s. Not to be confused with the round head fine tooth that was introduced into the early, early 70s. So let's go ahead and introduce our, our cast. We've got the half inch, three eighths and quarter inch. These weren't offered in any other derivation with the exception of torque wrenches. But if you know how to fix one, you can fix them all. And as I've alluded to in the history aspect of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. These are kind of a bear to use in terms of the selector and they are a little bit of a bear to repair. So let's get cracking. So I'll go ahead and show you the the ratchet itself. So I have two sizes that are the industrial grade or industrial version I should say and contrary to the standard Craftsman, these have a 20,000 series number. So we see for the half inch we've got 23809 printed in microscopic <laughs> numbers. And we've got 23803. So all the Craftsman ratchets basically since they started giving them a number, have had a 40,000 series number, so it'd be four, zero, 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 zero. But they decided with the industrial brand that they were gonna, despite the fact it's the same exact mechanism, it's the same ratchet for the love of God, that they were gonna make it different. Thank you, Sears. Uh, but we'll go ahead and I'll give you the numbers for these. So we've got the half inch round head, the Craftsman equivalent, not the it's going to be different than the industrial number. That one's going to be 43176. We've got 3 8 round head at 43175. And guess what? Predictably, the quarter inch, the standard Craftsman, is just a number below that, 43174. Regrettably, Sears doesn't always follow that philosophy. Sometimes the numbers jump. It's kind of weird. But... For the most part, they'll be in some sensible sequence. So there you have that. Without further ado, let's tear these things open and see what we got going on. I'll do the half inch because it's the easiest one to do. <laughs> I'll leave up the rest of it to you. Because this is just a, an instructional yes you can video series not I'm not gonna rip them all open nobody's gonna want to see that and I think that I would probably have to put a parental advisory on <laughs> my video so if you've watched my craftsman ratchet teardown preparation video where I display some of the tools that or tools that I suggest that you bring on your journey when you start ripping these things apart uh, one important tool that I forgot to include was this guy, the Torx screwdriver. The one that you're going to want to use, made in Western Ford, USA, Woo. is the T15. You want to include that in your arsenal. And for some reason, much like how these don't necessarily get a whole lot of love, <laughs> I re regrettably forgot about them. And this is a special case ratchet. You're going to need this one special application tool because on the top, all that holds this together is one Torx screw. That's it. So let's open her up. So you probably want to get your hand firmly applied. Hold that selector in position. And when you first crack these open, you may or may not notice a bit of blue Loctite. 
on the threads of the screw. It's optional if you want to redo that. Simply, you can either remove the selector plate or you can pull from the stud. It just it's up to you. So as you're already seeing, there isn't a whole heck of a lot to this. While I certainly applaud the simplicity of this design, uh, the maintenance aspect and the just the general use aspect of this particular ratchet, uh, kind of, that it, it's not horrible. I mean, I've worked on worse, but it's not necessarily uh, on the easier scale of things. So let's go ahead and we'll grab one of our probes. Let's take a look inside of the, the ratchet itself. So here you'll see the, the finer machining that went into this. It's 45 tooth, if memory serves me correctly. And there is a slight difference between front and back. So you want to mount your selector plate where the brand logo will be. Let's examine the disc. So here's the selector disc. It's just been called by some the triprop. And this little guy right here is going to be all important when we put this back together. Here's our top of the bread loaf Paul. So this is doing the business end of things. They're both the same on top and bottom. Here's our pin. And then finally, majority of your mechanism is dead space. <laughs> and that's it. Doesn't do anything. It's just there as a backing plate for the paw. So this video should be quick and painless putting it back together. So what you want to do, get your stumpy part in there. If you haven't already lubricated it, you want to do that now. I've been using Super Lube. It works awesome. So lubricate appropriately or when appropriate. You'll want to give this guy some love. Make sure you give it some lube because it is, it is rotating and it helps spread the lube. Ratchets and shacking up have one thing in common, proper lubrication. <laughs> Drop your bread loaf in there, <laughs> your paw. It's not that big of a whoop where exactly you put it, at least right off the bat. And with this little hole here, you'll want to put, oh boy, there's all sorts of euphemisms here. Get your in in Zaya. There we go. My recommendation would be to grab some kind of blunt tool, a pick, what have you. We'll use our little curved guy here. And you'll want to put your thumb over that pin that goes in the pole. You want to drag this over. There we go. Success! And I've repositioned it to right about there, typically. Because what we're going to do, I'm going to make a pretty obscure reference, but if you've watched my channel, you'll notice that I collect oddball video games. And <laughs> it's like two things that are polar opposites juxtapositioned to each other. Manly man tools and video games? Hey, you can be a man and play games and still be awesome and cool. But my reference is... Putting the pin on this little stud is kind of like trying to land the plane in the original NES Nintendo game Top Gun. You're probably going to die. <laughs> it's, it's not that easy. So you're going to want to try your best to align this up as you position. Oh, sh see, shnikes, I barely did it. i got butterfingers here. Oh, no, I'm losing your pin. Okay. So we'll try and line it up appropriately. Nope, not, not doing so hot there.
Okay, did I do this right? <laughs> Success, question mark? Put your pin back on, or your, your screw, get your 15 Torx T, T15. Screw that puppy on for dear life, and hope to God it worked. Holy crap! It worked! It worked! <laughs> That's awesome. The first time I made this video, um, I ended up scrapping some of my my teardown videos. I wasn't really happy with the video quality. I needed a better camera, and <laughs> uh, it took me three times to get it right on the original shitty quality. So there you have it. These are the round head. Crafts and ratchets, not to be confused with the roundhead fine tooth. So, wow, <laughs> you proved me, you done proved me wrong, ratchets. <laughs> You're not as hard apparently this time to put together. Uh, maybe it's experience, but normally they kind of are a little bit of a pain. But there you have it. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope that uh, if you've got one of these and you're wondering how to put it back together, it'll help you out.